Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Data Diversity. We'd like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Data Diversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Siner. Today, Bob will discuss metadata management's impact on data governance. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And just a note, Zoom defaults to chat to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely switch that to network with everyone. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A section. And to find the chat and the Q&A panels, you can find those icons in the bottom middle of your screen to activate those features. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for this series, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, let me give the floor to Bob to start his presentation. Hello and welcome. Hi, Shannon. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to um, to participate in this webinar, whether you're watching it live or you're going to watch a recording of it, or maybe you'll be doing both. Um, you know, it's funny, Shannon and I always laugh about before the webinars start about, you know, I always say, hey, this is a great topic for this month. Um, next month, it's a great topic for that month. Um, this is truly a great topic because, you know, if you were all in a room together, I'd ask you a show of hands, all of you that were metadata is not having an impact on your data governance program or metadata has nothing to do with your data governance program. I'd ask you to raise your hands and I wouldn't expect a single hand to go up. So again, a great topic for this month. You know, we talked about frameworks last month. I'm gonna kind of relate in to that uh, as we go through this as well. And then, you know, in the future, we've got some really interesting topics coming up. So there was a guy, just real quickly, there was a guy who was a coach of a hockey team in Pittsburgh that always said, it's a great day for hockey. It didn't matter if it was in the middle of the summer when it was 110 degrees, it was a great day for hockey. Oh, it's a great topic for a webinar. And so I'm looking forward to discussing this topic with you. Boy, there's lots of things going on in the data management and the data governance space. And I happen to be involved in, in a good number of them. Just want to quickly share them with you. Um, as you know, the monthly webinar series on the third Thursday of the month. Next month, we're going to talk about how generative AI and large language models shape data governance. So that should be, again, a great topic, a very timely topic. We're hearing a lot of conversation around AI governance. Um, we also need to look at it the other way around, see well, how are generative AI and large language models helping to shape data governance. I will be speaking a couple of times at the uh, Data Governance and Information Quality Conference, Data Diversity's DGIQ conference in San Diego in June. I will be giving a presentation on frameworks and models and best practices, and then also doing a keynote presentation on navigating data governance in 2024. There are so many things happening that are having an impact on us. We're going to talk about how are we going to navigate um, through those through those waters in 2024. I talk a lot about non-invasive data governance. I've written two books on the subject. Please go take a look at those. I have a couple of learning plans. I have several learning plans available through Dataversity. I'm working on one. If it wasn't for technical issues, we would have had that done already. But it's gonna. It's called How to Set Up a Data Governance Framework. KIK Consulting is my consulting business. And then there's some news even around the last item on this list for, for today. Um, Carnegie Mellon University, if you recall, if you look on the, on the bottom right of the screen, you see it says C Data O. Well, just as I was saying, artificial intelligence and everything that has to do with generative AI and large language models, they seem to be replacing everything. So the big announcement in the last two weeks is they're no, no, no longer calling it the Chief Data Officer or the C Data O program. It is now the Chief Data and AI Officer. So if AI hasn't come to you in your business, it's going to be coming soon. And we need to be thinking about it in terms of data governance. That Again, that should be a great topic for next month. But today we're here to talk about metadata management's impact on data governance. And there's a lot of subjects that, that could be, as I was trying to narrow them down to the ones that I wanted to talk about today, first thing I knew I wanted to do was talk about in general, 
kind of the relationship between metadata management and effective data governance practices. So that's going to be the topic we'll, we'll start off with. And then there's certain areas around metadata and data governance that that deserve a little bit deeper of an exploration. Uh, exploration. And one would be how metadata enriches lineage. Um, people want to know where their data came from. They want to be able to trust the data. They want to know what's happened to the data since it, it was since its point of origin. Um, we're also going to talk about techniques for integrating your metadata into a data governance framework. And I'll go back and I'll share my old, or share my old, share my framework with you, the one that I've talked about recently, and talk about techniques for integrating metadata into that framework. Then we'll talk about leveraging metadata to improve some of the things that are most important, top of mind for a lot of organizations, which are data quality, data lineage, regulatory compliance. And then I want to wrap up um, in the time that I'll have remaining to talk about several cases that are good examples of how metadata-driven data governance has really helped organizations to be successful. So those are the things that we're going to talk about today. I always start by sharing definitions with you. Um, and you may have seen these definitions before here or somewhere else. But I define data governance in pretty strong terms. And I define data stewardship in pretty strong terms, too. When I say data governance is the execution and enforcement of authority, no matter what approach you take to data governance, at the end of the day, you need to execute and enforce authority over the data. That's what the governing is all about. So no matter whether you take a command and control or a traditional, if you build it, they will come approach, or you follow the non-invasive approach, at the end of the day, we need to execute and enforce authority over the data. Um, we need to formalize accountability for data. I've written a lot of articles about how everybody in the organization is a steward of the data if they have a relationship to the data that they are being held formally accountable for. So if you use data that is sensitive, you are expected to follow the rules associated with protecting that data. Um, if you define data, if you have standards for how data is being defined, you um, should be following those standards too. And anybody in the organization, or, or should I say everybody in the organization potentially defines, produces, and or uses data as part of their job. And if they're being held accountable, for that relationship, they're a steward. So when I say everybody is a data steward, it's truly the only way to cover the entire enterprise. I just wanted to provide a definition of data management as well. This is, is a pretty generic definition of data management, but let's talk specifically about metadata and metadata management and the definitions of those terms. I define, I have a longer definition for metadata than this, but I wanted to, to cut it down to one quick sentence, sentence. And so metadata is data, and it has to be stored somewhere in a tool somewhere, even if that tool is the back of a napkin or, or a, a piece of paper that you've drawn a diagram on. It has to be stored somewhere to improve both the business and technical value and understanding of data and data-related assets. So you'll notice that we'll talk a bit about not just data about data. We're going to talk about data in terms of the roles people play, the processes, the metrics, the communications. There's a lot of different assets, including the stewards. We need to know who the stewards are for specific data. That in itself is metadata. And then I also shared a definition of what metadata management is in general terms as well. So the first item that I want to talk about today is, again, like I said, this was definitely going to be the first because we, we need to talk in general terms about the relationship between metadata management and having an effective data governance program or effective data governance practices in your organization. So there's lots of things in general that organizations are trying to do to kind of bring together the metadata efforts and the data governance efforts, if in fact they're not both under the responsibility of the same person. And some of those things are establishing a common data language, um, 
establishing and enhancing data quality across the organization, facilitating what I mentioned earlier, the lineage of the data and knowing where data came from, supporting compliance. That's not something that we opt into or opt out of. We need to support compliance and risk management. And then improving data usability and accessibility. So I want to go through each of these and just do a little bit of a deeper dive into really the relationship between metadata management and then how we're going to effectively implement these things within organizations. So let's start by talking about establishing a common data language. Back in the early days of data management and data administration, it seemed like it was all about creating a common data language. You know, people in organizations use different terms to describe the same things. Just worked recently with a client that really focuses on one specific thing and they had six different definitions for it. So they needed to come up with it. What if people are going to use that term for marketing and they're going to use it for operations? You know, we want to make certain that we have the same definition of what that that term is. So defining standard data terminology, you know, figuring out what your most critical data assets are and making certain that there's consistent definition of those terms across the organization that's going to all be recorded within the metadata, and that's going to help you to establish a common data language across your organization. What I found is in this one organization that I mentioned, when they're trying to get consistent in this one piece of critical data, that establishing the common data language did a, a huge job of facilitating cross-departmental communications because everybody who got involved in the conversations were they were all concerned about that piece of data and they recognized that it was a problem so by establishing the common data language again being very metadata focused they were facilitating cross-department communication they were ensuring that when somebody used this term or when they saw reports that they had a common understanding of what this specific piece of data was and you can do that you know, hundreds, if not thousands of times over within an organization, once you've figured out what your critical data or some organizations refer to it now as core data elements, um, providing a common definition for those things. And again, we're going to be collecting that information in the metadata. And if we're going to get to the point where we're consistently referring to something in the same way across an organization, metadata is going to play a big role in that. Another way to look at the relationship between metadata and effective governance practices is through enhancing data quality and consistency. What are some of the things that we are looking to do through metadata management? Well, we need to implement not only metadata standards, but data standards for specific pieces of data. We need to implement approaches for validating the standards and validating the data that goes against those standards. I had a client recently tell me that they didn't know what data was right or what data was wrong in the organization. That's a pretty general statement. And it, it kind of immediately took us into a conversation about, well, do you have a standard for that? Do you have a, a, a term that is going to be reused throughout the organization? So, um, you know, implementing metadata standards, implementing data standards for data validation, they're all going to be recorded within the metadata and they're going to be there to support effective data governance practices. Again, don't want to read through all of these things, but you know, automating data cleansing using metadata, it's hard to do those automated checks if you don't have information that says, in this situation, the data needs to look this way, and to highlight those occurrences where it's outside of what is expected. So enhancing data quality and, and consistency, that's another way that there's a relationship between metadata management and effective governance practices. Facilitating data lineage and, and traceability, you know, documenting the sources. One of the things people want to know, especially with these new, not even new, but data analytical, analytical platforms and even back to the days of data warehousing, in order for people to raise their data confidence level, they needed to know where that data came from. That's recorded in the metadata. So as part of your metadata management effort, you've got to doc, not only document where the data came from, and the transformations, what's happened to that data along the path. It may not look at the same way as it did at, from point A when it finally gets to point Z and where people are actually ingesting that data. Tracing the, the data movements across systems, these are all 
things that are going to be recorded in your metadata as you're building out your metadata management to support your data governance program. You know, supporting root cause analysis, enhancing transparency in, in data processing, knowing who has access to what data along the way and where the changes are made. I'm going to talk about that a little bit here, a little bit more here in a minute as well. Supporting compliance and risk management. As I said before, where your, your organization is required to comply um, and to decrease risk, this is not optional for your organization. So you need to map your regulatory requirements to the specific data assets that are part of those regulatory requirements. I'm gonna talk a little bit here in a couple of minutes about metadata tagging and the ways that you can use metadata to help to enable you to support compliance and risk management. For example, if an auditor comes into the organization and wants to ask you questions about where the data came from, um, how it follows the rules, how you can prove and demonstrate it's following the rules. A lot of that, those answers, those resources are going to be within the metadata itself. So again, when organizations are thinking about the relationship between metadata management and effective governance practices, supporting compliance and risk management is a big part of that. And improving data usability. You know, I mentioned before the data confidence level and how organizations are trying to increase people's confidence in the data. Well, if you know, using metadata, providing the context for the data, where the data came from, the quality checks that are being done on the data, who's responsible for that data, all of that information is the metadata that's going to make that data more usable to people. And, you know, there's already systems in place that are managing, at least in most organizations, managing the accessibility of the data and who has access to what. The problem is that oftentimes that metadata itself is buried away within security tools. So organizations may look to leverage that metadata, again, as a way to be able to help to make their data governance program more effective. All right, so we talked about quickly the the, def, the relationship between metadata and effective data governance. Let's spend a little bit of time kind of honing in or doing a deeper dive on how metadata enriches the lineage of the data and provides insights for people as to where this data came from, what's happened to the data along the path. So we're gonna talk about data provenance. That's not a word that I see used too often in industry, but that's basically the point of origin for the data. And then mopping, mapping, not mopping, mapping how the data flows across systems, identifying where it's being transformed and how it's being transformed, and maybe even why it's being transformed, ensuring that you have an auditable trail of where your data changes in your organization, and then making certain that all this metadata that you're collecting is there to support audit, audit and compliance efforts across your organization. So again, remember here, we're talking about metadata in general, its impact on your data governance program. That information about the, the point of origin for data is, is an extremely important piece of metadata. And not only that, but knowing when it was created, knowing when it was modified, knowing who's responsible for it and which system it is a part of. Again, all of these things need to be included in the metadata in order to enrich your ability to do lineage, in order to have that dramatic impact on your data governance program. Again, I know I've talked to a lot of organizations that are implementing data governance programs and metadata and lineage seem to be one of the first items that they all seem to want to address. Because again, the, the thing that people are asking for is, where did the data come from? How can I trust this data? As we talked about the point of origin, yeah, the data provenance, that's very important, but then mapping your data flow across systems is very important as, all, as well. And so there's a lot of tools out there that will help you to visualize your data movement and where data has been integrated with other data. That's all metadata. That, that's where um, the metadata is gonna become that additional tool to help organizations to move their data governance programs forward. If you want get, to get people to have confidence in the data, the metadata and the mapping of the data across systems is gonna be extremely important. You know, highlighting where the changes to the data take place. As I mentioned earlier, defining who made the change and when the change was made is critical for tracking the, the, the 
the lineage across systems and across applications in your organization, identifying which of the, the data inputs are coming from outside the organization and inside the organization. Again, mapping data flow across systems is an extremely important part of how metadata enriches lineage for your organization. As I mentioned before, the, the transformation points. Where are changes being made to the data? When are the changes being made? Why are they being made? And are they being governed? Are the changes in the data even being governed? So documenting the transformation rules and the logic, recognizing where in this flow and this mapping of data, the data has been aggregated or filtered or cleansed, you know, tracking versioning and updates. Again, we're looking for ways that metadata, metadata's impact that it has on data governance um, when people are looking at lineage, not only are they looking at the point of origin, but they want to know how it came across systems, what happened to the data along the way. I know there's a lot of different things that we need to consider in terms of transformation. Here's just a list of five of those items. But identifying where the data changes and who's making the changes are, again, important in raising people's data confidence level or the confidence that they have in the, in the, the, uh, in the data itself. And ensuring transparency. I mean, that is, um, people want to know if you're working with auditors, I think my next note here is also about selecting or, or supporting the audit staff within your organization. You know, at some point, if they're going to do a data lineage on your check, they're going to want uh, on your data, they're going to want to know where the modifications were made, where there were updates to the data, you know, providing that audit trail. In fact, I'm going to jump right into the next slide here as well, because supporting audit and compliance efforts is extremely important. And the metadata kind of builds that backbone of information about the data that the auditors are going to want to see. I know in the in years ago, when an audit was going to be done within an organization, they would literally assign a team of 10 people to work to make sure that they were pooling all the information together that the auditors needed to see. Those days are, have come and gone. I mean, we're at the point now where we should be able to pull up that information pretty readily because the questions, the, the audits can come, can come fast, they can come quick, they can come often. Um, we need to be able to trace the data through its life cycle. We need to be able to demonstrate that it's being, that it's complying with regu data regulations all along that course of lineage. Enable quick retrieval of the historical data processing. People want to know what the data looked like in, in previous weeks, months, years. So again, where is that information going to be kept? It's going to be kept within your metadata that you're using most likely not only to support the organization, but specifically to enable your data governance program. So supporting audit and compliance efforts, I have been known to say, that the auditors are your friends and that you should work with the auditors and have an idea as to what information they need and that's gonna help you to be able to pass the audits and the compliance um, assessments with flying colors. So if we don't have conversations with these folks up front, then they're gonna let us know during the audit what they need and then we're gonna go looking for it. So I have been told by several clients that auditors are not your friends. Usually they're kind of pointing at the auditor who's in the room at that time of the meeting. But they say that, you know, they say, well, we kind of, we're fearful of auditors. And I suggest actually it should be the other way around. It should be that we're partners with the auditors and we, we should want to know from them what information they're going to need to uh, be provided so that we can prepare ourselves to be able to provide that information. All right, let's talk about some techniques for integrating this thing called metadata into our data governance framework. And so in, in a recent webinar, I went completely through the, the data governance framework that I use. And that's why I said the learning plan coming up through data diversity is you know, how to build out a data governance framework and how to populate it. So I wanna talk about some techniques for integrating metadata into that data governance framework. And one of those ways is to implement, uh, implement a metadata repository or a data catalog, or it goes by different names. The old name is the metadata repository because that was basically the data warehouse for all of your metadata. We were gonna store it in one place, 
Now there's data catalogs. Not only that, but there's data catalogs that focus on specific aspects of the industry, like quality or maybe even lineage or policy management or those types of things. We may find that the world goes back to calling them metadata repositories instead of data catalogs. That's not a prediction on my part, but it would make sense because it truly is a repository of all the different types of metadata. We'll talk about the importance of automating metadata collection, standardizing metadata across sources, all of these things. So let's kind of jump into it. First thing I wanted to do before we really got into this section was um, provide to you just a, a, a version, a, a visual of what the data governance framework is that I work from quite a bit. And just to give you a quick description of it, if you've never seen it before, I, I outline the six core components of a successful governance program across the top of the framework. And those are data, the roles of the program, that's typically the backbone, the processes that need to be governed, the communications associated with it, with the program, the metrics and the tools. And not only do we need to focus on these core components, but we also need to view these from each of the different perspectives and the different levels of the organization, from the executive level to your strategic you know, council or committee level to your domain steward or your subject matter expert at the tactical to your, to your data stewards, and then all the functions in the organization that are presently governing. They're not called data governance, but IT is already governing IT. Finance is governing your finances. HR is governing your, your HR information security and on and on. So there's a lot of support functions within the organization if we start thinking about all the information that can be collected in each of those blocks, I refer to them as bridges between the core components on the top and the levels on the left-hand side, there's a lot of metadata that we, could, that we could collect and that we could integrate into our data governance framework. So most organizations just kind of look at the data column and say, okay, what data, is, what data and what metadata is important to our executives? at our strategic level, at our tactical level, you know, how do, what data processes are they involved in? There's a lot of information that could go behind any one of these bridges within the framework. So we could certainly just take the data column and flush out a lot of metadata about the data. As I said, it's not just about the data, it's about data and data related assets. And those data related assets are the roles, the processes, the communications, all the other components core components of the of this framework. And so we could do the same thing with tool with roles. We could identify who the stewards are, who the subject matter experts are, who's on the council, who do we need to bring in to get certain policies passed or directives uh, uh, agreed to. Um, so there's a lot of metadata that could be collected there. The process is the same way. Again, this is not a webinar to discuss the framework. But you could see if we could start to fill in all of the information that's relevant, all these bridges between these core components and the levels, and we could start thinking about the metadata that's relevant, that sits behind these things, it's going to help us in a, in a great way to have our metadata have a, a really positive impact on our data governance program. So let's talk quickly about implementing metadata repositories. So it, again, as I mentioned, it's kind of that centralized storage for your metadata. It's like a data ware. I always likened it to a data warehouse for metadata because you're bringing in, just like you're bringing in data from disparate sources for a data warehouse, you're bringing in metadata from disparate sources into a central storage location. That was always the metadata repository. That's the data catalog now. And we need to be able to define access controls and permissions, standardize metadata formats. Several organizations I'm working with have created data inventory formats and templates for people to start to inventory what data they have in the organization. A data dictionary format or template, a um, data business glossary. Again, there's a lot of things that you can do to start populating information and, and metadata into your metadata repository or your data catalog. And then of course, there's always integrating the data catalogs with other management tools within your environment. So all of these things are, are techniques to help you to start integrating metadata into your framework itself, but then also for metadata to have an impact on data governance. I was going to fly by this slide pretty quickly, but I'm deciding not to do that because I can't 
tell you how important this slide. Oh, I'm, I'm going to tell you how important this slide is. Um, the automation of metadata collection is critical in most organizations. If you're relying on somebody to trigger some activity to populate metadata into your repository, that, that could happen most of the time. But there's no assurance that if you haven't automated that collection, that it's not going to get done. So deploying the metadata extraction tools, but also implementing, you know, the, these mechanisms that recognize, oh, we changed the structure of the data model and we need to update the metadata repository. We changed the structure of a database or a column, or we changed the business role that's written into um, part of our environment. How do we make certain that that's reflected actually, um, it's accurately within the repository? is we need to automate these processes. So implementing the real-time metadata capture, configuring data integration pipelines, using the bridges that are provided by a lot of these um, tool vendors to, to ingest metadata from one, take it from one source and load it into the other. That's nice to get those working. I know that as my past experience as a metadata repository administrator, I spent a lot of time working on those bridges, trying to get the metadata into the tool. The trick was actually then to build the automation so that on a regular basis or when things change, that those changes are then being reflected within your metadata repository. So again, like I said, if you look at underneath the, the graphic that says automation, innovation, technology, process, digital, all the way across, um, this is something that is really critical. And, and I tell you that it, uh, from my experience, I've known it to make or break successful metadata tools, metadata repositories. In fact, I can tell you that when I first implemented a metadata repository, I loaded metadata to the tool 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but I had no mechanism to recognize when things changed. So almost immediately when the metadata was loaded into the tool, it was out of date. So we ended up scrubbing everything that was in the repository and reloading it, but we didn't start to reload it until that automated metadata collection was there and it could recognize when changes were being made. And what's really funny is when we started to, un to roll out the repository tool that people were telling us, they were testing us to see if the metadata was accurate. And something that changed last week, it was reflected in the repository. They were amazed by that. They wanted to know how, without them telling us it changed, it was loaded in the tool. Thus is the need for automating metadata collection. <laughs> we need to, we can't rely on people to do this. We need to automate it, build it into process. Um, stand, and one more thing to say about that is when somebody moved something from a development to a test to a production environment, that was where we logged where things changed. So that was how we knew to trigger actions to reload the, the metadata into the repository tool. Standardizing metadata across sources, again, developing naming conventions and standards, creating templates so that when you provide those, have other people in your organization do the work, have them fill out the templates. That's the way you can engage the people that you're recognizing as being stewards and domain stewards, or even, I guess I wouldn't go as high as the council to ask them to complete these templates. But you know, this is how we engage people, but they want help in being engaged. They want help in, ter in terms of consistent templates that aren't asking for too much information, but are asking for the appropriate information. So standardizing metadata across sources, um, linking your metadata to your data quality metrics. Again, think of it in terms of the framework that I just shared and all the metadata that needs to be collected for each uh, to, to in order to provide the metrics to each level of your organization. So defining quality indicators within the attributes, associating metadata to quality scorecards so people can do deep dives in the scorecards to find out where this data came from. What is it high quality? Can we trust this data? So linking metadata to data quality metrics would be one way to take the data governance framework that I just shared and kind of go down the quality column and start identifying what metadata do we need in order to achieve successfully um, share metrics to each of these different levels of the organization. Um, embedding metadata into what the stewards do. 
you know, recognizing who has responsibility for which metadata in the organization, incorporating the metadata review into the activities that are being reviewed uh, in terms of what the steward's responsibilities are, using metadata to document the, the activities that the stewards are doing. Again, don't want to read every bullet to you, but you, we want to embed metadata into process. Just like I said, I say to many organizations, you're already governing your data. You're just doing it informally. You're doing it because it's informal, it's inefficient and it's ineffective. That's one of the core tenets of non-invasive data governance is that we want to move from informal to formal. And we need to recognize who the people are in the organization that are already responsible for providing definitions and all the other types of metadata that we need to fo we focus on. We need to embed metadata into our stewardship processes. I wanted to share with you a couple graphics here. I'm not sure they're in the right place within this slide deck, but just to share with you how, another, how an organization, a technique they used to integrate metadata into their governance framework, they defined what I originally had called three levels of metadata, but now there's really four levels of metadata because I've included the data domain level on the top. You know, many organizations talk about the business glossary, the data dictionary, the data catalog, and the specific types of metadata that are collected within these. Well, when it comes to the data itself and who cares about what in terms of the data, we need to also document our data domains. So again, this is just one technique that an organization used to, first of all, explain to people what information they needed and how it was going to be useful. I have two other versions of this that I want to share with you as well. If you can, can see down the left-hand side of this diagram, that's the standard domain name. That's the standard glossary name, standard dictionary name, standard data catalog name for what a data element would be called across systems. But then if you go across and you look in Salesforce, in the data lake, in different um, applications or data resources within the organization, they might have different names. So being able to say that, okay, this is the standard name. This is what it's called in this system. This is what it's called in this system. And here's how the data compares from system to system. And just one more example of it. Another organization actually took something very similar to that and started really mapping to their reporting that they were doing across the organization. So here they had kind of standard names for items within reports, but then they also wanted to prevent, present the names, the labels of how things appeared on different reports coming out of different systems when it was specifically the same data. I mentioned earlier that the kind of case study where an organization was trying to come to agreement on what a single term was, well, it became very clear to them that they're even labeling the data that they're providing on the reports differently. And you know what? That's a piece of metadata. So if we can standardize on what we're calling things on reports, what the labels are, we're going to be integrating metadata not only into our framework, but we're going to be uh, in integrating metadata into our program itself as well. I'm looking at the time and seeing how much time I have. I want to leave some time for, for Q&A, if there's any Q&A at the end of the session. So let's talk next about leveraging metadata to improve quality, lineage, regulatory compliance. I'm just quickly going to go through some of these slides. Um, you know, certainly enhancing data discovery and how easy it is for people to find the data that they need to do their job. You've probably heard the 80-20 rule applied, where people, people spend 80% of their time looking for the data and wrangling the data and getting the data the way that it needs before they can do what they're really skilled at, which is analyzing the data. So let's enhance data discovery. Let's enhance people's ability to find the data that they need so we can reduce that 80% it's never going to get reduced down to zero, but it, it, they're always going to be looking for the data that they need to do their job. If the metadata repository tool that's supporting data governance can provide them that marketplace where they can go in and find what data exists. I had a, an organization recently tell me about how their data catalog actually helped them to do reporting that they had never even dreamed of doing because they didn't know that they had the data to be able to do it. So again, enhancing data discovery and classification, enabling precise quality assessments and those types of things. Let's walk through each of these one by one. I mentioned earlier that I was going to talk about metadata tags 
and there's organization that use metadata tags for classification, for categorization, for I guess we wouldn't call it domainization, but uh, you know associating things to domains. I guess that would be categorization, but then also to tag certain data and certain metadata associated with major initiatives and projects that were taking place across the organization, implementing metadata-driven search capabilities. So give people the ability to search on data based on the metadata that you've collected. Again, the metadata about the people, about the data, about the roles, uh, about the processes, um, the communications, the metrics, the tools, all those types of things. So apply metadata for automated data classification. There's tools that do some of that automated classification for you. Use metadata to enrich how people can actually find the metadata and find the data that they need. And to get them to have confidence that they can go to the metadata resource, the centralized resource, if there is such a resource, to get the information they need to, to locate the data that's going to help them to do their task. Enabling precise data quality assessment. You know, we need metadata. We need to define the data quality criteria in metadata. We need to do um, track the metrics and see how the metrics have changed or even track the results of the metrics through the metadata itself. How has the quality of the data improved over what time? What is it? What is that quality improvement related to? You know, we can bring process into that as well. Um, using metadata for data quality scorecard, automating data quality checks, um, all of these things, you're not going to be able to do these unless you have sufficient information about your data. So enabling precise data quality assessment is going to come through the metadata that you're collecting to specifically help the data quality initiatives. But data quality, as we all know, is one of the first things that a lot of organizations focus on when they're implementing data governance. And then tracing the, the lineage as well for transparency so people understand and trust where the data came from, understand how it's changed, understand what processes it goes through, and those types of things. So tracing the lineage for transparency is extremely important. And then streamlining compliance, um, compliance reporting. Again, I know we, organizations are burdened quite a bit with um, creating compliance reports. If there's a way that we can use the metadata to help us to generate these reports, to recognize if we have problems with our data that might show up on a compliance report, you know, we need to leverage the made metadata to imp improve um, regulatory compliance as well. And the last item here is um, facilitating data privacy management. I mean, data sensitivity and how people are using data and what data they're being allowed to collect or being able to opt out of having data being collected about yourself or, or about some transactions that you're uh, involved in. I mean, that's all coming if it's not here already, where people are going to have a lot more control of what data gets shared, well, how data is used within an organization. If we don't have metadata about that data, we're going to have a hard time facilitating data privacy management, you know, if, uh, you know, without that type of metadata. So the last thing that I want to talk about, and I'm going to run through these relatively quickly before I kick it back to Shannon, is just some cases that showcase how metadata has had a, a, a tremendous impact on a successful governance program. So the first one I want to focus on streamlined regulatory compliance, accelerating data quality, enhancing lineage, um, improving decision making. The truth is I'm not going to name the client or even in the industry for each of these cases, because the chances are that within your organization, you're trying to do some of these same things. So I just want to give you some key considerations to think of in terms of these use cases, specifically that fourth bullet, the improved decision making through data insight accessibility, through that context for the data, that's a biggie. So we're certainly going to need to talk about that. Um, in an organization that was focusing on classification of the data, they were looking to automate and accelerate the way that they were classifying their data for GDR, GDPR compliance. It could be for compliance to any of the rules that you need to follow. You know, having a uh, having an inventory of that data, having good metadata actually enabled a client of mine to run an algorithm against their data inventory um, and actually 
create at least a an initial set of classification for the data within their organization following stringent rules that defined what does it mean to be highly confidential? What does it mean to be sensitive or public? Um, so we followed those rules, but without the metadata, it would have been impossible to actually go about and automate how we went uh, to, and accelerate the data classification for the GDPR purposes. And all of these other things, automated reporting for financial regulations, efficient identification of, and protection of, it says PHI, but it could also be PII. It could be intellectual property for your organization where you don't want to share certain intellectual property outside of the organization. Simplifying your audit trails. From, so let's go to the next one. Um, who, another organization where they used metadata to really have a tremendous impact on their data governance program was focusing on accelerating their data quality improvement efforts. So they used the metadata to help them to identify and correct data anomalies. But if they hadn't recorded what the standard data was, what the acceptable data was, they would have a very difficult time trying to recognize where they had those data anomalies. So again, that's built into the metadata that's part of this as well. Enhancing data cleansing operation, you know, automating data quality monitoring. Again, it's impossible to do this if you haven't collected the metadata that's going to help you and your organization to be able to focus on data quality. I didn't provide a list here of the of the quality attributes. I'm actually working with a client on that right now as they're flushing out their metadata standard. They want to know what are the what are the data quality items that need to be collected about specific systems and about specific data resources and critical data elements in the organization. Enhancing data lineage for your audit trail, as I mentioned several times already in this webinar, people want to trust the data. They want to know where it came from. They, they need for you to be able to track its origin, its provenance, its transformations, um, how it moved across systems. I talked in pretty good detail about each of these items. But if we're going to use metadata to enhance our data governance program, if we're going to look to answer the questions that many people have, they're going to want to know where the data came from. And again, I can't stress enough how being friends with your auditors and knowing what they're going to be looking for could be beneficial to you in the long run. Improved decision-making through data insights. Again, the, a, an organization that was specifically focusing on getting people to understand the data better, understand the context of the data so that they could create predictive and analytical models. How are they going to do that? They were gonna do that through the information that they had about the data. Again, I know that's kind of a quick broad brush to paint this one with, but this is the one that I actually think is relevant to mo probably most of you that are in this webinar. Everybody's looking to do improved decision-making. They're looking to do it through data insights, um, through access accessibility to the context and the understanding of the data. Just another example. And then another example of an organization that is in the, in the throes of implementing a CRM system just starting to recognize where that CRM system integrates with other systems, how that data moves from one system to another. Is it even going to be possible? How can we assure that all the data moves from one place to the next? You know, it's going to be through the metadata. It's going to be through knowing what data we have, what data was at the source, what data needs to make it to the target. You know, how does the data map up or map to each other? What transformations need to take place in order to move the data from system A to system B? So I feel like I've gone through a lot of materials really quickly, but I hope that I broke it down in a way that made sense to you. First, I wanted to talk about the relationship between metadata and effective governance practices, focus on the, the lineage and the origins and the transformation of the data, talking about taking the metadata that you have and integrating it into whatever framework it is that you're using, whether it's a framework similar to mine or any others that's available to you. We talked about leveraging metadata to improve the quality. And then I walked through several cases of how organizations have used metadata to achieve the goals that they've set out for their data governance programs. And with that, Shannon, I am going to turn it back to you to see if we have any questions.
Thank you so much for another great presentation. If you have questions for Bob, feel free to put them in the Q&A portion of your screen and just answer the most commonly asked questions. Just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday to all registrants with links to the slides and links to the recording, along with anything else requested here. Um, Bob, diving in, um, you know, it's it's an important topic. It's a hot topic that comes up. So how do you see AI being different than machine learning uh, impact on data governance? Um, we know that AI encompasses the idea of a machine that can mimic human intelligence, whereas machine learning uh, does not, although maybe they're using ML, uh, Peter, maybe <laughs> a little differently there. It, see, it simply um, identifies uh, trends and patterns in data. Consequently, do you think AI will transform how meta metadata management is done? There's a long answer to the question, and then there's a short answer to the question. I think, no, it may not change. Well, there may be ways that we can use AI to collect metadata. So that might make it change. But the metadata, um, the, the method that we go around, I, I always talk about, and there's a, a online learning plan through Dataversity called metadata governance. The metadata has to be governed. So there need to be people that are accountable for the definition of what metadata we're collecting, the production of that metadata, and the usage of the metadata. The usage is really the the, the primary thing here that's changed, the usage is now we're looking at AI and large language models and things like that that need to be supported. Again, going back to something I said earlier, the data confidence levels are real. It's not really a thing. I just started using that language to, to get you to, to think about how much confidence people have in the data. Um, it's going to, it, it's not going to change that much, but the way that we go about collecting metadata may change. So that's the biggest impact. I don't think we're going to change how metadata management is done at this point. Um, who knows if somebody has a different opinion, feel free, free to put it in the chat or let me know about it. Perfect. So Bob, um, is common data language different than comma data structure? Um, yeah, a common data language and common data structure. Um, a common data structure, what I would think would be a place where people, where people from different functions can go to get to get their data out of a common resource. A common language is calling things by the same name. So if you have everybody going to common data resources, um, then you, you probably have a common name already associated with it. But since organizations don't have a lot of those platforms available, um, I look at them as being different things. One is focused on the language and one is focused on you know, the, 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 the definition of the data in the system itself. I don't know if that answered the question, but it's a good question. Very good question. Um, and how to apply this if we have around 400 systems within the organization? <laughs> Only 400? Only. Have, I'm yeah. kidding. But I mean, they're um, in, a, in an organization that thinks that they have 400 systems or knows that they have 400 systems, the, the chances are that there's a significant number of data resources beyond that 400 that you're not even including in your systems, right? So all of that data needs to be, and not all of it, at least the most important data that's being used for business purpose purposes have to be governed. Um, I would suggest that you don't try to do all 400 of your systems at one time, that you do it incrementally, that you find those systems that contain the most critical data and critical data elements and maybe focus on those systems first or focus on a finite number of those systems that focus around a specific business domain or data issue that your organization is focusing on. But you now, how would you apply it? In a, you're gonna do it carefully <laughs> for 400 systems, but you're also gonna do it incrementally. Indeed, a lot to tackle there. Uh, so Bob, can you, quote unquote, standardized metadata without messing with applications and code? That's a, <laughs> we're getting some really good questions today. Um, 
you can stay without messing with applications and code. So I'm curious as to what they're talking about in terms of messing with the applications and the code without having to make changes to it, without needing to, you know, it's, if you're standardizing, so let's take the term metadata out of the question and say, can you standardize data without um, without messing up the, the applications and the code? I'd say it's very difficult to standardize the um, the data itself but standardizing the metadata that you're collecting about the applications and the code, I would think that yes, you can standardize the metadata to say, okay, we need a data dictionary from application A, application B, and application Z. Um, we can standardize what metadata is being collected in that inventory, in that resource, um, without having any impact on the, on the application itself or the code. Um, it's when you go to standardize data that you're going to specifically impact the data, uh, impact the applications in the code. Thank you. And so far, we just have one question left. We've got five minutes. So if you have additional questions, feel free to type them in the Q&A panel. So Bob, any recommendations on how to manage align multiple data catalogs? We now have three as data catalogs are integrated <laughs> with other tools. Wow. Okay, so you have three data catalogs, and if you recall, I referred to you know data catalogs, metadata repositories as kind of being the data warehouses of metadata because we're they're relying on metadata from different places. Do I have recommendations on how to align them? Um, if the goal is to align them without a limit, and again, I'm going to just answer this off the top of my head. If the goal is to align them without the plans to eliminate one, there's going to be a lot of bridges that are being built between you know moving metadata and integrating metadata back and forth. Um, the the you know I would not again I would I would again say start small. Don't start by trying to um, integrate all the metadata in all the catalogs. I'd say find a specific subject area of metadata that you want to focus on and, and see how easy it's going to be to integrate those across three separate catalogs. If I were in conversation with this person, I would ask them how, how the metadata is different in each of these data catalogs or to what extent it's the same, because that's going to also start to point you towards where you should start to integrate these catalogs. Yeah, lots of open uh, questions there. Um, I don't see any additional questions. I'll give everyone just a moment here. But Bob, this has been another fantastic webinar. I love all the questions um, in the chat of people asking about specific products and for assistance there. So um, always love seeing the networking going on. Um, all right. Yeah, well, Bob, I mean, again, again, I'll yeah. just wrap it up too and say that, you know, this is, we need, if you're not considering metadata management's impact on data governance, you have to be, you should be. Um, if you are going to be looking to change positions or roles within this space in other organizations, they're going to ask you questions about how your metadata was used to impact data governance. Um, most likely, at least I would ask that question. So again, thank you for coming today. And uh, Shannon, another great topic. Indeed, I agree. <laughs> as much as I tease you about it, it they are all great topics indeed. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And thanks to all our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do. Again, just a reminder, I will follow up by end of day Monday with links to the slides and links to the recording. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks.